There are seven comedians that perfectly represent the seven deadly sins, and in this video, we will cover them all, starting with envy. Envy is defined as jealousy over the blessings and achievements of others, leading to resentment and ill will, and Brendan Schaub is a perfect representation of this. He's an ex-UFC fighter who transitioned into being a stand-up comic and podcast host when he realized his fighting career was on a downwards trajectory. Brendan is known for forcing the comedic lifestyle and gets constant criticism for being a failed comedian who's not actually funny. This urges him to constantly feel the need to be superior to other people and want what they have. This was demonstrated when he asked a producer for The King and the Sting if he went to college. Nick, you, you're been awfully quiet. Did you go to college? I did. I went to University of Minnesota. I didn't finish, so I dropped out to play poker because I'm an idiot. But I got a 31 on my ACT. Poker. You played poker? Really? Yeah. I, I don't know if I'd brag like in the I'm 31 not bra on ACT. <laughs> no, that's really good. 31 no, that's, is good. 31 is really good. Any 30 or higher is really good. Yeah, Brendan doesn't know what's yeah. good. 36. Well, I, got, I got a 32. No, you did. I swear on my life I had a 32. On I'm, ACT. I'm, ACT. I'm, yeah. I'm impressed, but I consider that really good. Yeah. Yeah, I consider both of them good, mm -hmm. bro. And despite everyone in the room knowing it was a lie and calling him a liar, he persisted and persisted until they moved on from the subject. Clearly, Brendan can't accept someone is smarter than him and has something he can't get. Another time Brendan displayed his envy was when he tried to make a move on Bobby Lee's girlfriend at the time, Kaylila, and her co-host, Annie Litterman, despite Shab already being married with two kids. On episode 49 of Trash Tuesday, Annie and Kalila were explaining a story of a comedian who tried to get them to walk him to his car in an attempt to get some sexual action. Love this. So wait, we walked to my car. I finished my spot being very good at comedy. You not being good at comedy. And then- <laughs> That's a so, clue. By the way, I don't want like to be seen with you. That's I don't- the biggest clue you could ever give. This created beef between Brendan Schaub and Bobby Lee, which shows due to the envious nature of Brendan, it ruined a relationship that could have actually been profitable to both of them. Brendan should have observed the biblical law to not covet thy neighbor's wife. Another comedian who should have been following biblical laws is Tom Segura, who commits the sin of pride. Pride is described as excessive beliefs in one's own abilities, which interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God. Tom Segura, the co-host of the Your Mum's House podcast, is the perfect representation of this. Tom grew up wealthy as his father was the vice president of the multi-trillion dollar bank Merrill Lynch. This gave Tom an affluent lifestyle without him having to earn any of it for himself. This manifested itself as an attitude of disdain towards the poor, which he isn't afraid to show on Twitter. On May 10th, 2023, Tom called out poor people and said they're specks of shit on a washcloth and washcloths belong in the trash. Since Tom publicly makes comments like this, it's no surprise he uses his platform to flex his wealth and his car collection, whilst insulting those who have less than him by reminding them that it's their own fault in a condescending way. If you're still mad about this, just know that it's your mindset and you're thinking like a fucking loser. You only have what you have because of fans, so don't talk about us like that. Yeah, but you're still a loser if you're thinking like that. And so, you're maybe, uh, I'm lucky to have you as a loser fan, but you don't have to be that way. You could be a winner, you know? You just gotta uh. change the way you think. Tom fails to recognize that it was only the grace of God that saved him when he broke all the bones in his body attempting to perform a layup because he was too fat to do it. Most of his fans resent him because he constantly flexes on the people who give him the opportunity to live what appears to be such a good life. It's quite similar to how Andrew Schultz portrays the sin of greed as the host of the Flagrant podcast. Greed is known to be an intense and selfish desire for wealth, power, or material possessions, and Andrew Schultz has displayed this on multiple occasions. A perfect example of this was during his comedy special where he did what no other comedian has done before. Just for context, as people pay money to see their specials, every comedian makes sure to put no ads in their special. However, due to the greed of Mr. Schultz, he became the first comedian in the world to have an advert in the middle of his special purely because of how profitable it was. And you're gonna do that by gambling with the best gambling platform on the planet, betonline.ag, and using my promo code, Andrew. Why are they the best? Because they sponsored this special. This led to great criticism, and many people started calling out his actual comedic ability simply because he could not look past making a bit more money on his comedy special. He just couldn't get enough. Quite like Bert Kreischer, who personifies gluttony to the T. Gluttony is described as an overindulgence and overconsumption, typically of food or drink, to the point of waste. 
So when you consider Bert made a name for himself in the comedic game by pushing his body to the limit by doing wild challenges, this makes sense. As he became successful, over time he became comfortable and ended up becoming gluttonous. This gave him a love for partying, excessive drinking, and overeating. Of course, this means he's overweight, and instead of having some humility about it, he leans into it throughout his comedy, often making jokes about being a fat person or just talking about how much alcohol he consumes. This has caused a lot of hate for Bert, as he's put no effort into his well-being. Instead, he embraces being out of shape. Bert Kreischer might take things to the extreme, but... When it comes to your business, you'll need to have precision and control. And that's where today's sponsor, Nextiva, comes in. Have you ever tried to balance your work life and personal life on the same phone? And had messages from both friends and family getting mixed up with important business messages? If so, then Nextiva will be perfect for you, as it allows you to use a single phone with multiple numbers. Nextiva consolidates your business voice, texts, video messages, and CRM inside of one app. You don't need any tech experience. You just need to download their app and follow the easy setup. Whenever I've tried to mix business messages with personal messages, it has always ended poorly, with both my personal and business life suffering the costs of incorrect messages and late responses. Over 17,000 verified customers have left positive reviews about their usage of Nextiva. So if you wish to use their service, click the link in our description, or try nextiva.com forward slash the internet hard drive. Another comedian who's caught up in gluttony is Chris Delia, but this time, it's sexual gluttony. Another definition of sexual gluttony is lust, and it can be described as an intense or unrestrained craving for sexual pleasure. Chris Delia is a comedian who's been caught up in a few scandals throughout his career. One massive one was in June 2020, when he was accused of trying to meet with a minor on Twitter after finding out she was underage. This opened the floodgates for many other allegations to come flying in. Delia has publicly admitted to having a sex problem, but he's never admitted to any of the allegations against him. At one point, when the accusations were getting serious, Joe Rogan had to delete all of his JRE appearances. Shortly after, claims of Delia messaging a 16-year-old on Snapchat and continuing to pursue her even after he found out she was underage, and his realization that Snapchats can be saved has become iconic in comedic history. But, 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 hold on a second. How, how did it come out? Like, how did they... The uh, boy's mother ended up finding it. Fucking Finding haters. it? What do you mean? It, it, the Snapchat goes away, right? How they... He probably saved it. You can screen record, take screenshots. Allegations even began coming out as the second season of You came out on Netflix. Ironically, Chris played Henderson, who is a famous, wealthy comedian, who's secretly a serial rapist, who targets teenagers, and Reddit didn't miss this. So with all the allegations against Chris, it's hard to deny he has an obvious problem with lust that has derailed any hope he had of being a great comedian. Similar to how Wrath has derailed Ari Shafir's comedic career. Wrath is defined as having uncontrolled feelings of anger and hatred, often resulting in a desire for revenge. Ari showed this on his old podcast, Punch Drunk Sports. His employee, known as Fat Man, made a minor mistake that didn't let them take calls from viewers whilst on air, and Ari absolutely obliterated him, making it known that he resented him and no longer wanted him present. Please. Then go home! Get the fuck out and go home! Do you understand me? You fucked over our show two weeks in a row. Get the fuck out and go home. Go talk to your boss and tell him we don't want you anymore. Get out! Are you too fat to move? Get the fuck out! Go stuff out in the parking lot, asshole! Jesus Christ. You're not wanted here! He then displayed an even higher level of wrath, when he got physically abusive towards Bobby Lee. Back when Ari Shafir was dating the female comic Natasha Leggero, Bobby Lee's friend Ron Peterson caught an eye for her. This led to Ron taking Natasha out on secret dates behind Ari's back, and once Ari found out what was going on, he was furious. Ari immediately called Bobby Lee and asked him to break into Ron's office, go on to his computer, and find the emails between Natasha and Ron. Obviously, Bobby rejected this proposal to avoid committing a crime, so Ari grew even more annoyed. Ari then launched into a full attack on Bobby Lee the next time he saw him at the comedy club, punching him to the point he fell and kicking him whilst he was on the ground. But this wasn't all. Ari followed this up a week later by strangling Bobby Lee to the point where his neck was bleeding. This actually got Ari fired from the Mind of Mencia show, when Carlos Mencia discovered what Ari did to Bobby Lee. But Carlos Mencia is not an angel himself, and he is guilty of the sin of sloth. Sloth can be described as laziness, or the failure to act and utilize one's talents, often reflecting a lack of diligence. And who better to personify sloth 
than Carlos Mencia. Carlos is a South American comedian who's been known for stealing jokes throughout his career. His stealing of jokes was going well until he was confronted by Joe at the comedy store back in 2007. Joe and Carlos got into a full-blown argument in front of the crowd, where Joe constantly accused him of stealing jokes, and Carlos repeatedly denied it. It's easy to say you steal shit. I could say you steal shit, but I don't, because I'm not a little bitch. But once Ari Shafir came on stage and backed up Joe's claims, it was clear to all that Carlos was guilty. However, Carlos refused to give up his lies and continued denying that he sold jokes. Even Carlos's own friend Bobby Lee started exposing some of the material Carlos has been copying. But once he realized he was on camera, he stopped exposing his friend. It's a shame because Carlos could also have been a great comedian like many of his friends, but his sloth held him from his potential, and keeping up with the rapid growth of others. However, not all comedians are this bad. Click here to see a slightly less sinister one.